That's 10 minutes. So that whole orientation has to be re reconfigured, even the parking lot has to be reconfigured for after that fire path. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So, so to provide the fire access, you need to we need to widen the gate. Widen the gate and provide the turning radius for the The only issue that I have to do to the finishing uh, I know it's a stupid point, but not, not that specific. Yeah, but it's so the gate now opens this way, mm -hmm. as a slide door. The original gate before that is actually swinging on the When it used to be swinging, the, the kids would actually come and push it in and overcome it the power of the magnets. You know, we suffer from that for many, many years. And once they overcome that, they keep repeating it, repeating it, and the ones they get. So we fix it. And they come again and move. And so on and so on. And so on. And so on. So that's why we move to the sliding gate. So, but if we move it up further, also to the left, the sliding gate will be close to the fence mm -hmm. of the neighbors. So you cannot slide it anymore. Okay? Unless you slide one way towards the hill. Gotcha. Or lift them up or lift them up. Or something. So, okay. Okay. That's a good point. So we'll definitely take that into consideration. Sounds good.
guys pretty busy right now? Yeah. It seems like هو ده يشتغل ازاي صعد الله Good morning, how are you? Good morning, how are you? I think I'll have a good morning. Good morning. Good morning. نعم لا ابونا مارك بقى نعم بجد طب ما نطلع اونلاين تعيش وتلم يا ابي جبت كل الزباين يعني تعيش وتجيب يا ابي فاتك ممكن تعمل ايه؟ هو عنده بقى انا سامع صوت عليك عنده ممكن تعمل ايه؟ هو عنده؟ اسكت بقى ايه؟ Okay, so I keep the mic here for you and you press the thing. Uh, good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Is everyone excited? All right. Not if you're not, not if you're in my place. 
All right. So um, it's uh, today we're uh, presenting the, the the God willing the new um, building for the uh, for our church, our new home. I would like it to. I would like to say that's our new home. Um, so I will do the intro. I was chosen to do the intro, although I don't know much. But I'll do the big Thank you, sir. Rabbana <laughs> khalik. And then uh, uh, Michael, the, our architect, uh, will give us the rest of the details and he will give us. Uh, so let us move on. So, um, uh, yani in the Bible, it teaches us unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers are working in vain. So we are all laboring, are all working with God. So God is the founder, God is the builder, and we're all working with God. Why we're remodeling? So the current building is over 50 years. We bought it, and we've been in it for about two plus years. So, and we have need to renovate, and it's, a, it's undersized, and as we can all tell. So we need to increase the church capacity seating to accommodate current crowd and future growth, inshallah. Uh, you see, like in the second liturgy, uh, sometimes the first and sometimes on Saturday we have a lot of crowds so we need to accommodate and to make it safe and to make it healthy at the same time so we don't feel the crowd so uh, also because we have overcrowded Sunday school classes so we have shortage of classrooms number and capacity we see some of the Sunday school classes we use them half Sunday school class and half storage room so we need specific room dedicated for Sunday school classes well equipped and clean and accommodate a large number of kids and also as i said because of the low quality of the classroom so also we need to increase the parking spaces and when we have occasions when we have yani thank god we have the marad next weekend and the feasts and, and occasions when we have them a lot of people will block others a lot of people don't have spaces to park a lot of people will go down stairs to uh, to park so we need more uh, parking spaces. Also, we need to add facilities to our children, youth, and families for the coming generations. Uh, we need to up upgrade and, and go on. The goal is to have a design, uh, the Coptic church architecture, that can accommodate the current crowd. So the seating in our current church is 360 seats only. God willing, the church that we will have will seat, or the seats will be 600. And uh, in some occasions, we have, as Michael will tell us, they have overflow hole that we can accommodate more. But we start with 600 seats in the new church. And we increase the number of classrooms from 11 classrooms that we have currently to 22 plus and some of them are bigger than what we have, or most of them are bigger than what we have now, and then plus also the lounge room and many facilities. So we added facilities, activities room, like multi-purpose room. Uh, we have a theater, youth lounge, outdoor children playground, outdoor youth and family gathering, etc. So we have more things uh, to be added. We added the parking facilities from 156 parking spots to 220. It's almost two-third increase. And also, when, uh, when we gathered and when we thought of the, the project, we made sure that uh, the, the service will not in be interrupted. So we'll do phases. We have two phases. Again, Michael will give you the details. But thank God we came uh, to a design when we cannot or that service will not be interrupted so that was a very important element and that was very important fact in our decision making that the service will not so the the phase one will be on that side while we're praying here when we finish that phase we'll start with this based on a lot of other factors considering the budget spent current circumstances provide a design based on phases depending on our needs and depending on the current circumstances. Uh, what is going to happen later on, we don't know, but we have a design, thank God, that can go on phases. We'll start with our most need, which is the church and classrooms, and then we'll do the multi-purpose hall and, and things. So um, 
how did we approach the design? We addressed all the collected inputs from the church servants and members about service capacity requirement future needs. If you remember a few years ago, we had a meeting and we proposed, we're not proposing today by the way, we're presenting just to make sure. We had a proposal and we collected a lot of inputs and we sat with a big group of engineers and professionals and out of this good big group, we had a committee formed. We had all, we collected all the inputs that we had from that bigger committee and all the servants and uh, all the activities in the church. And then we consulted the Archdeacon Dr. Meher Abu Saif. He is with us today. And Dr. Meher helped a lot. Like he is a, a genius engineer and uh, he uh, designed Archangel Church uh, in Santa Ana and uh, El Malak Sheraton in Cairo. If you know El Kinesi El Malak Sheraton in Cairo, he's the one who uh, did that design and many other churches. Uh, I think he did that also in uh, Giza. So uh, Dr. Meher, it's a, it's a great blessing to have him. And uh, Dr. Meher, يعني ربنا عوضه. مش عارف بيعملها ازاي بس ما بيتعبش يعني اللي بيشتغلوا حواليه بيتعبوا هو ما بيتعبش خالص يعني ربنا يديله الصحة يخليك لينا تعبناك يا دكتور ماهر. And we also the group the, 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 I'm now going to mention names because I don't want to take anyone's blessings they will receive many blessings in, in heaven um, but we worked with a very dedicated group and everyone contributed a lot to that design so Dr. Meher worked with Sam Rees group for Church of Engineers and Servants to design the initial blueprint architecture. Then, um, of course, the, the, the final design was presented to His Eminence Ambassador Rapion and we received his blessings. And then um, we presented the solution to the church board and applied for initial approval from the city of Pomona and thank God we received p approval including approval for f uh, the 45, um, 45 feet height um, and that's by the way that's not was not that, that's this is when we started to see the miracles of God uh, working in that project we received five proposals for design documents and uh, we awarded the uh, to the architecture design to uh, engineer Michael Fargalla. He's been working with us and he's been uh, doing a lot of great works and he's so patient with us. He always accommodate our needs and he always take the details that we ask him to do and he will add them. <laughs> uh, uh, he is the CEO of the Urban Dwell Architects, right? Did I say it right? Okay. So, um, this is uh, one of the things. So by the way, on that screen, you will see a video will be going on during uh, the presentation. So Engineer Michael will give us the details here on that screen, but on both screens, and it will replay and, and replay again and again and again, the final after the two phases. Um, housekeeping, this is the last screen, housekeeping. Presentation will be mostly in English, if any, terms is not understood, Abuna will do the translation at specific points if you need translation. No questions will interrupt the flow of the presentation as the question may be answered during the presentation. So we'll wait until the end of the presentation. If you have something in mind, it might be answered during the presentation. Papers and pens will be distributed and kindly write your question either in Arabic or English and Abuna will collect the questions will be answered and addressed at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions during the presentation, Kamal has papers now, ho? Kamal Meshi from Nos, he has papers and he has pens. Presentation will be recorded and will be made available on church websites, accessible at any time, just in case people are not here. It's also live streamed now, so people are watching us now. But just in case people are not available to watch us or to be with us now, they can see later every milestone will be announced timely during the progress of the project. So today is the beginning, but God willing, every time we achieve something or we do something new, you will be aware of it. Um, we need your prayers. As I said at the beginning, 
This is everyone's new home. This is everyone's new um, building, new home. Uh, and uh, we, we need your prayers. We need a lot of prayers. As I said at the beginning, if God does not build a house, the laborers are working in vain. We believe that God built his own house if we all unite together with prayers. Also, we need your patience and cooperation. Um, we'll start from now. You know how things go here in, in, in the state. You have to apply and wait for permits, and you have to apply and wait for permits, and people come and inspect. Like you have a lot of processes to be done, procedures to be done. So we need everyone's prayers, everyone's cooperations, everyone's patience. Like when we do phase one, a lot of you, a lot of things might not be available. That needs our patience to bear with it until everything is done, until we see the final product or the final project is done. So we need your prayers, your cooperations, and your support. Um, this is everyone's home, and we all have to contribute with blessings, with patience, with financial support, with a lot of prayers, until we all have that dream, inshallah, hopefully soon, to be our new home. So I'll let uh, Michael take it from here. Thank you. I forgot to say thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. All right, my name is Michael Faragala, and I'm here to uh, present the new St. Maurice Coptic Orthodox Church renovation. And um, the way I'm going to present this is from going to be from large picture to small picture to kind of show what we're going to do as far as site amenities, and then we're going to hone in on the phase one component and what kind of amenities we're going to achieve as part of phase one. And then we'll go into phase two as a holistic view of um, what you will ultimately have once the entire church is completely constructed. You'll notice that, okay, thank you. You'll notice that part of phase one, you're already going to have much more amenities than what you have right now. And it will solve a lot of issues and concerns that, you, that the church is currently facing. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and get started. Obviously, this is our um, existing church uh, site plan and the path of travel, uh, the vehicular path of travel coming up to the church and back down. The reason why I show that is because there are so many constraints already right now that the city and a lot of governing agencies are already complaining about. For example, the fire department is having issues getting their fire truck up and down. So this is something that we're also taking into consideration as we are redesigning the site. And so first slide here, essentially I'm going to discuss the site scope, okay, what we're doing on the site. Currently you have 156 to 176 parking stalls is kind of what we've been able to count. What you're going to get as part of phase one completion is the 220 parking stalls. Along with that, currently the, the church is about 16,000 square feet, give or take, is the footprint. What you end up having is almost, it's over triple that. We're talking about 55,000 square feet. And the reason the church's proposed size is so big is so we're able to accommodate all of the needs that the church has right now and also plan for the future, right? And so based on, on our studies and our analysis, we came up to the conclusion that you need the two-story building to maximize the uh, potential of the site right now is well underutilized and we have a really beautiful site here and so how do we utilize that by having two levels sunday school trip main church and also a mezzanine level that will provide some balcony level and we'll go into more detail with that currently you have an outdated 
basketball courts that we saw outside. We're proposing a new basketball court. We're proposing a new mini soccer field instead of the turf area that we have outside. And then also we want to provide a lot of outdoor amenities and recreate. We're in Southern California, so the weather is always beautiful, and we want to make sure that we are able to enhance those uh, site uses. So currently you do have a small outdoor gathering area that I believe is well underutilized here. What we are proposing is new um, outdoor gathering area that will be the main focal point as you come out of the church. You're also going to have a new fire pit facing the, the view on the back side of the site, as well as a meditation area. We're going to have a new children's playground, and we're also going to have another gathering area that's, uh, that's going to be more enclosed with, uh, with a canopy on top and barbecue spaces. And as you guys know, the new codes now also require that all new developments must be serviced with solar, and so we are also proposing to have a double use for a solar. It potentially can provide some shade and also provide a lot of electricity. So this is just a slide kind of outlining what we're doing to the site. And then I'm going to show you a bit more of the visual here. So you can see here, number one is obviously the existing church, the rundown turf that we have on the backside here, the basketball court, and obviously the condition of the site and the parking. This is what we're proposing, realignment of the, the drive aisles to allow for easier flow in and out of the site. We're going to have 220 new parking saw, uh, stalls. The church obviously grows a bit in footprint, but also in density and height. And then we're utilizing the back area of the site where we have the better views uh, to have that outdoor fire pit, to also have the outdoor gazebo with the barbecue areas, as well as in the front here where it's closer to the uh, parents' view will have the, uh, the playground for the children. And uh, because it is in close proximity to parking, what we're doing is we're doing a vegetated buffer all the way around it to provide some safety and security for the kids that are playing in there. And so that's is essentially the amenities that you would have along the site. Lots of gathering space, lots of open space, much more upgraded, obviously, site and, and parking. And all of that work has to be completed as part of phase one, so when we start phase two, we're not necessarily interrupting the site, but only building that additional component vertically, and that's about it. Um, so with that, I am going to close out on site and go into phase one. What we're going to get as part of phase one. Right now, the church has about 11 in total uh, Sunday, Sunday, uh, class, um, Sunday school classes. Six of those classes are non-conforming, essentially illegal, right? Either we have them in trailers outside or a couple of walls that we built, right? And they're well subpar. I mean, we know that. What we're proposing as part of phase one alone is that we would have 18 higher capacity classrooms, an average size 275 square feet, which can accommodate about 30 children per class. Um, obviously, the, the, the church capacity in its asymmetrical condition right now, I mean, you have some people that are tucked in into the, is not very symmetrical from a church standpoint. You have about 340 occupants. What we're proposing is to double that to 600 occupants at the same time also provide a very holy and spiritual space in the sense of the church where you would walk in. It's a very symmetrical. It's got its main focal point to the altar. It's got a double height space. It's got the indirect natural sunlight coming into the space and also elevate it from the main ground level, right? So you're going up the steps exactly, exa exactly the same way the church is supposed to be designed. So you get a much more elevated and almost double the capacity of a church. Okay. Yes. And of course, the, it will be facing the proper direction, right? Which will be facing east, and that's 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 a given. If you're we're designing a new church, uh, restrooms also. I think another issue that we're running into right now. Um, what when we walked the site, we saw that you have about four multi-occupant restrooms that are very underutilized. Again, uh, not in an optimum uh, way in any way. Uh, what we're proposing is seven new multi-fixture restrooms that are going to be distributed very um, um, 
thought out throughout the, the, the new design, right? So on the first level, you're going to have a male and female multi-occupant restrooms. On the main church level, you're also going to have male, female. You're going to have one in the altar, um, the, which is a typical thing that we do whenever we design churches. And then also on the top level where the mezzanine is, which you were, where you would have the, the cry rooms and the infant rooms and whatnot, you're also going to have some multi-occupant restrooms there as well. Um, control room, we have a small control room right, right now back here, but with today's technology and advancements and everything else, we're going to provide a state-of-the-art control room. And the same, I, I don't know if you guys know, but we've actually done the new Sunday School building in St. Mina. And the way we like to design those control rooms, is they really control the entire site. They control the security, they control what's happening in the Sunday School classes, who has access to spaces and who doesn't have access to spaces. So we don't run into any sort of vandalism and things of that nature uh, down the road. Um, conference room, uh, the existing, you have a small uh, 400 square foot conference room that will be maintained as part of phase one, as well as the church portion will be maintained as part of phase one. So we'll be constructing the new church while the, the existing church is, 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 is operating. And once the new church is completed, then we move that main um, service, obviously, to the main church, and then we start looking into how do I accommodate the missing services as part of the existing structure here, and how do we start piecemealing it out to build the phase two. Um, storage areas non-existent right now based on current floor plan. I, I know there are some u rooms that you have as double uses. We're proposing as part of phase one that you would have 600 square feet of distributed storage. So you will find some uh, closer to the Sunday school building, some closer to the church for, for those amenities and whatnot. So definitely some, some 600 square feet of storage, and then you'll see in phase two there will be additional 600 square feet being added to that. Atrium area. This is very important. I think there should always be a buffer zone between the church and the street. You should not always be discharging from the church out straight to the street. And so what we're proposing, we're proposing a smaller or half of the size of the overall atrium area that will be completed as part of phase two, but we'll have a smaller atrium area to allow for that buffer zone between the two. Also in the days that we have rain and whatnot, there is that space that's providing that shelter, that's providing for, you know, you gather yourself, your children before you're either getting in and out. It also provides a little bit of overflow in those events that we have during holidays. Uh, so that's an atrium area, and I will kind of go through that in more detail as we go through the uh, uh, other slides here. And obviously vertical circulation, you don't need it right now because you only have a single level. But with the new church, with having three levels, we will have three staircases as part of phase one and one elevator. And then as part of phase two, you'll see that that, uh, that number um, also grows. Um, so with that, we'll go to the footprint here of the existing church. And this will be the footprint, again, a portion of the existing church that remains. And then this is a portion of the, the, the I'm sorry, the first level of phase two that gets constructed. And as I mentioned, you'll see that all in purple here are all of the classrooms that you get, which will be, you'll get about 18 classrooms. And those classrooms will have movable partitions. And again, to plan for flexibility and for growth. So say, for example, this year you only have five kids in kindergarten and you have 25 kids in another grade. You're able to move some of those partitions to close up smaller space for the, for the smaller crowd and then give a larger space for the, other, for the bigger number. And so that flexibility, I think, is very important. And this is something that uh, um, Lydia and Dr. Meher obviously worked on uh, very tirelessly here to try to get to. Uh, but so this is what we have. We have 18 classrooms, and you will see that we have restrooms on that level, uh, multi-occupant restrooms here and there. And you, as I mentioned, there is multiple storage um, areas throughout and vertical circulation. While we're constructing this, you'll see that the existing church is not being interrupted. So the existing church, the administrative area back here, is all staying in its intact. So we keep that service moving. This area here we can talk about at a later time if any questions uh, arise as to any of the items that we're demolishing here. As far as second level goes, you'll see that we have a very symmetrical uh, shaped uh, church um, experience. 
with the baptism where it's supposed to go. And then this area that you see out here, this is that um, atrium area that we're talking about where as, a, as a buffer between the church and, and getting in and out. You'll also notice that we do have restrooms, also again, servicing this level. And um, uh, the control room that we would have here to also control what's happening in the church and whatnot. Vertical circulation on this end, vertical circulation on this end, obviously a much larger altar than what we have right now, and then we'll have a small restroom here to service uh, the deacons and the priests as, as, as conducting the liturgy. Elevator on this area here, closer to the atrium. So for elderly that are trying to you know, go up or down, we do have that availability or ability as part of phase one, and then that will grow in number as part of phase two. And then we also have a balcony or a mezzanine level that's overlooking the church. So this is the existing church, which is a double height space. And here you will have all of your crying rooms. And again, it's a much larger space. We're talking about 1,200 square feet that can accommodate easily 80, 80 person uh, room in there. And we'll also have an infant room with a small nursing space. So the, you do have that ability to also um, attend to your, uh, to your, your, your young. And again, as I mentioned, you do have the multi-occupant restrooms on that third level, and the vertical circulation extends all the way up to the mezzanine. So if an elderly person is trying to go all the way up to the mezzanine, you do have that ability to do so as well. Yes. Sure, of course. Yeah. Are we all following Michael? Do you know where, where is everyone? Where is everything? So uh, that green line here, is this wall okay so the first phase will be anything or beyond that wall all right so this is the current church can you go to the slide before yeah so this is where we're sitting now this is where we're sitting right here okay and these are the offices okay so this is phase two so what michael is explaining to us is phase one and phase one are three levels okay so this is phase one i mean level one the classrooms and then the second level will be the main church facing east it will be facing that way and then on the third level a fee what do you call it it's a it's a mezzanine, mezzanine. yeah there you go at the mezzanine and then the the cry room and the the corridor and the restrooms so just making sure you're following what michael is trying to say okay so this is all beyond that green line the green line is that wall Try to imagine. It was hard for me to imagine that stuff. With, with, with engineers, it's easy, but for us, it's not. So this is phase one. And then Michael, when he talks about phase two, that means from that wall on. All right? Thank you. Thank you. So essentially, what are we trying to achieve with phase one here is to solve all of the immediate problems, right? The classroom capacity, the church capacity, the essential needs. It's part of phase two is the recreational capacity that we need, which would include the multi-purpose hall, the game rooms, and things of that sort. So we'll go into more detail on that. Um, so that, essentially, that, area, that concludes phase one. So just to recap on phase one, what we end up getting, we get, end up getting the 18 classrooms, we end up getting the, the larger uh, church, we end up getting the most much needed storage areas that we need, the additional restrooms and the vertical circulation that we would have through the space. And, and obviously the, all of the site amenities, right? Which will include the parking, the outdoor basketball court, you know, soccer field, and all of the outdoor gathering spaces. So really what we wanna do is we wanna just be able to just fence off a small area, maybe five feet away outside of the building, and just construct that phase two without interrupting the church as, it, as it's operating today at a much higher efficiency, obviously. Okay, so we'll jump quickly into phase two here. So phase two, what are, what are we getting as part of phase two? Anything you see in gray here has already been completed as part of phase one. Anything is in green, it's either being enhanced further or being added in addition, right? So instead of having 18 classrooms, now you have 21 classrooms dedicated not to mention there are so many other areas that can be utilized as classrooms, right? So the cry rooms after the liturgy is done, all of those spaces can also. So the, the amount of classrooms that we can have, we can most definitely accommodate, right? All of the youth, all in, in one day, it's in, it's at least in, in, as designed. 
Uh, restroom capacity grows to 19 restrooms versus only seven on the first la on, the, on the first phase. And the reason for that is you do have additional um, multi-occupant restrooms that are servicing the, the multi-purpose hall. There are also m many single occupant restrooms that are sporadic throughout the administrative areas um, and whatnot. So you'll see that in more detail as we get to, uh, to the actual slides. Vertical circulation also expands. So now you have six um, staircases are all around and we also have four elevators all around. Right, so in case one of them is out of uh, uh, commission, you know, the other ones are, are operating. And so that's the intent of us growing that vertical circulation. The baptism room, we're growing it to 280 square feet in an efficient way, location. And in kitchen area, right now you have a 600 square feet, give or take, a, of kitchen space. What we're doing is we're actually growing that dr dramatically here. So, uh, you have a main kitchen that's 820 square feet. Then we also have a, a service kitchen that's going to be part of the multi-purpose uh, uh, hall that's an additional 350 square feet. And then we also have a pantry closet or a pantry room that's 160 square feet. It's not a, re it's not a closet, really. It's 160 square feet, so it's pretty, pretty large. Administrative spaces, um, much-needed administrative spaces as, as far as uh, priests, um, office spaces, conference rooms, and, and, to, and to that effect. Uh, we are going to grow that to 3,000 square feet, give or take. And if you want more detail on what's going to go there, I think it's more for administrative than anything, uh, then you can consult with one of the abunas and they can kind of explain that in, in more detail. Uh, the Bit Laham is also going to grow to 465 square feet to accommodate for the additional production that we need for the much larger church and additional amenities that you get as part of phase two. You get an 840 square foot youth activity room. You get um, a youth lounge, a 570 square foot youth lounge. You get a 600 occupant uh, multi-purpose hall with a stage. And um, you get the 3,800 square foot um, grow, uh, grown um, atrium space that will allow for that overflow and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then you also get a small chapel uh, that can accommodate up to 60 occupants. And so the reason for the small chapel, sometimes we have a liturgy on a Wednesday. Or, so instead of turning on the lights for the entire church and consuming all the electricity, we can have a small chapel that can accommodate the smaller group that usually comes in on those Mondays or those Wednesdays. Um, so we'll have that. And then uh, we'll also have the additional multi-occupant uh, restrooms that we uh, discussed up here. And then an additional 600 square feet of storage space also as part of that second wing that we'll be building as part of phase two. Okay, so let's kind of go through that for, for a bit here. So first level, you have a lobby space as you come in from both sides. So you have the classrooms here and then the expansion of the additional class classrooms. You also have the existing restrooms or I guess the restrooms that were part of phase one. Now you have additional multi-occupant restrooms on that second uh, wing. Here, then you have the main kitchen on the lower level here. And then you have an activity room here, and then this will be more the administrative area. So we try to isolate the administrative area as much as possible from the classrooms and the youth activities that we would have. Also, the focal point of this uh, lobby area, you would find your, your youth, uh, I'm sorry, youth lounge with uh, those double um, glazed doors that kind of egress out to the fireplace, and you can kind of see that a little bit in the renderings here as we go around. Um, but so that's, these are the amenities that you would have on the first level. Activity room, youth lounge, obviously the kitchen, and, and all of the classrooms. To Dr. Meher, uh, Meher's point, the reason why we place all the classrooms on the lower level is because of the, obviously you don't need that much height for uh, ceiling heights. Uh, and we can also, they're more con compartmentalized. So we can get all of our columns or all of our beams and whatnot to work. That way we can free up the space on the second level have that as a, a double height space, a lot of natural light to come into the space and whatnot, right? So that's really the logic of why we have the classrooms on the lower level and then the church on, on the upper level. The main thing is also any church, the, the, the way churches are supposed to be designed and the way that we studied churches, they always, you always want to elevate them from the street, right? You're, 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 going, you're purifying yourself by going up those stairs, right? And you're going through the buffer zone and then you're really going into God's house. So, so that's really the whole intent behind raising the, the, the church up as well. 
Uh, so there is a, spi a spiritual and there is a functional uh, side to it. Okay, as far as the, the second level here, obviously we've already discussed what's happening on phase one here with the church. So that atrium space, it's a double height space, and I'm gonna show you guys a quick view of it uh, towards the tail end of the slideshow here. Uh, but that, that's the area where people are coming in, so you don't wanna create noise as you come in straight into the church, and I'm sure you guys, the reason why you have the one door closed and whatnot, because you don't want people opening and closing the door coming into the church. So you have the church doors that are closed, and then you have this atrium space where people are able to come in from, this, from the street or from the parking or also from the multi-purpose hall. It is, it is a buffer zone that kind of funnels people either through to the church or to the multi-purpose hall, right? So if there is an event happening here, you also want to, don't want to disturb that. So that's why, that, again, that buffer area is, is created. Also, we do have those days where we have weather conditions and whatnot that it's always good to have that, that buffer area. I think it's, 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 a crucial, uh, it's a crucial, and it also needs to be big enough to be able to accommodate the discharge of all these people coming out at the same time, right? And so you'll see that also vertical circulation here now becomes very symmetrical. So this is the one that gets built as part of phase one. And as in, a, in a symmetrical fashion, you would have the vertical circulation with the elevator on the opposite end, as well as the small chapel that we discussed. So say there is a liturgy happening on Monday or Wednesday, smaller group comes in, they can come into the lobby or the atrium space, and then they can go straight to the small chapel, not consuming so much energy and electricity. Okay, and then we have our multi-purpose hall here that can accommodate the same amount of people that you would have in the church. And so between the actual open hall area as well as the second level, I'm sorry, third level mezzanine, uh, you'll see that the occupancy load is roughly about 600 occupants. And again, this area here is again part of the uh, further administrative area right behind the stage. So you have the stage and all of its supporting uh, uh, uses. And then we have a small portion of the administrative area as well that continues onto that level. And then we continue up to the last level, the mezzanine, and you'll see also that you have a balcony space here that can accommodate additional people looking down into the theater uh, or the stage. And then this is a double height space in the uh, multipurpose hall as well as in the church. So you get that double height um, efficient space, sorry. And then there is a, a continuous wall here that kind of isolates the two, and this is now becomes the administrative area that's mostly accessed from outside and not necessarily from inside the, the, the multipurpose or, or the hall. Um, okay, I think uh, that pretty much concludes as far as the floor plans and how we're planning on, on constructing this uh, and phasing it where we don't interrupt uh, the, the current operation. And I'm just gonna quickly kind of show here some of the aesthetic uh, materials and, and, and finishes that we're kind of proposing on using. We don't want to obviously blow the budget here. And so we are going to try to stick to very conventional plaster finishes and some pavers and standing seam metal roofs for longevity, but at the same time able to provide what a church should look like, right? And not necessarily sacrifice some of that aesthetic. And so here are some of the exterior elevations. Uh, we're thinking of copper on the, it's a, it's a copper look, standing seam metal roof. Because I, I know, I'm sure you guys have been to some churches where you see it was copper and it was gold and shiny, and three or four years down the road it oxidizes and it becomes green. But we definitely don't want that here. So what we're proposing is a standing seam metal roof material that has a copper look to it, and it's pretty much kind of stays, right? It's not something that will rust or, or anything, it's usually galvanized material. Okay, and so again, you'll see a lot of symmetry here, a lot of symmetry uh, in, in the elevations as you, look, as you look through it. This is as you approach the site, as soon as you come up the driveway, this is the main thing that you see. You see St. Maurice, Coptic Orthodox Church, and then you see the main dome and the two uh, cupolas on both sides uh, for, the, for the bells. And this is the main gathering space right outside of the main entry. So this is now the main entry to the church. This is that outdoor gathering space where we would have the water fountain. You'd have some vegetated buffers around. You would have some articulated uh, walkways with pavers just to kind of break things up from pavement uh, to which areas are pedestrian friendly. And this is another view of the staircase going up to the, sta to the church. And this is that outdoor playground for the children. I think we have a better view of that. Here you go. 
So here is the outdoor playground for the children, and you will see that there is a vegetated buffer uh, with a, uh, a, a low wall buffer to kind of insulate the children from uh, the parking areas. Here's another uh, evening view of the main uh, view that you will get as you approach the church coming up. And here's one on the rear side of the church where we would have the barbecue area. And then this is that fire pit, and again, in close proximity to the barbecue, and obviously behind that is you would have this amazing view that you get to see from, from here. Here's our basketball court, which will play as overflow parking in those holidays where we really need to maximize our parking. Uh, we would have that there. And then here is the view inside the, um, the atrium space where you would have the church coming out from one side and then you would have the multi-purpose hall coming out from the other side, right? So again, this is not rendered, it's just to kind of give you the feel of what that space would feel like once it's open. And again, in the balcony on top to connect the second level uh, mezzanines of both sides without, again, interrupting that op openness of the space. And then this view here kind of shows the volume of the space on, inside the church once that's constructed. So you, can get, you get to see that in indirect natural sunlight that will come in from above, the much larger space, the much bigger open uh, volume that we would have here. And so just quickly to discuss timeline here, this, the process from today to beginning of construction, we're thinking we're probably about 18 months out. 18 months out. We have to go through planning, and that's usually about six months. Then we gotta go through the engineering process of developing the drawings, and then it's an additional six months of uh, you know, getting those permits. So hopefully, all in all, I'm being conservative here, we may be able to beat that timeline, but all in all, we're thinking about 18 months before we can break ground, God willing. Okay. And that's, that's all I have, guys. Thank you so much. في question related to the العزاء يعني rooms or uh, so all the classrooms uh, that they have partitions. Uh, طبعا we have many 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 rooms many meeting rooms that we can use. Uh, some of them in if you can bring uh, the uh, the classrooms. The phase one. Yeah, the phase one. Th there is some of those classrooms they have. They have entry like this one, so you can open all these three classrooms. They have a separate entry for, for, for that purpose. If we need a bigger room, we can use this one here. So, so we have multiple places. We can have multiple events happening at the same time. In phase two, definitely we'll have much more. So even within phase one, we can accommodate uh, multiple events, whether it's AZA or uh, whatever events happening or a meetings or a choir is doing their performance. Uh, with this partitioning model, uh, those rooms can be converted to a larger room that accommodate multiple people. The other question was talking about the time frame. I think Michael said the time frame. Building, it depends on a couple of things. The cash flow as well as, so phase one, it should take how long if we start building? I would say phase one, probably 12 to 14 months in total, we can probably have that constructed. Yeah, yeah which, which is very, very reasonable. And then phase two, it's, it's according on, we're going to revisit the budget and everything in phase two and see where we are, and then we can decide uh, how we can do that uh, on that time. Any more questions on this too? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, so the, some of the elevators that you will notice are really deep. Like this one, for example, here, this one and that one, actually deep elevators. So they can allow for large dollies and things like that. And the reason why we have those two as deep the way they are, because you are also in close proximity to the kitchen, to the service kitchen. So if you are going up to the multi-purpose hall and whatnot with larger, hopefully that. Yes. That's correct. How can, how can we, like the kitchen, the hall, okay. some So we'll be using some temporary facilities. As, as you know, like if we need an additional bathrooms, for example, we can buy uh, or rent uh, a cabinet that can be used as a multi-bathroom uh, uh, or, or 
uh, toilets for, for the use. So we, you have seen them in several places. So we, we buy them ready or rent them ready, and we can use them. Uh, so every, everything that we necessarily use, like a room for the korban, for, for making the holy bread. So we're going to have a, a, a temporary, another cabinet to do that. The, the baptism, we have to find also a, a plan B, something portable that we can do. So the, 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 during the, the, the 18 months or phase of the construction, uh, this is what Abuna Mina said, we have to bear with us on, we're going to have temporary facilities, okay? So every function will be done, but not in the same way, not in the same convenience. So we'll have uh, things that we're going to use. We didn't put plan for this, but the plan is to find out what alternative we can use to can fulfill the needs until we finish the phase one. When we say temporary facilities, they're not temporarily in the sense of porter potties, nothing like that. We have, uh, we have utilized in the past trailers. actual trailers, right, that you go in, it's a, it's a full restroom, multi-occupant restroom, and that's kind of what we're thinking. It feels more as a permanent structure, but it's ne not necessarily it's something that's being rented. And you can do the same thing also with the kitchen uh, experience. And we do have the space. And so the idea of that red square here, this is kind of what we're proposing for all the temporary facilities to take place. It will be in close proximity to the church, you know, as we're doing the construction here. How much is the cost for the first phase? Okay. So, so we, uh, we have a budget a budgetary for phase one. Uh, phase two is too, too early to get a budget for that be because it's, uh, we cannot uh, yeah, forecast the price in five years from now. So uh, phase one, it, it, the, range is, the reason we have a range is we don't have a final design document. So if you go to any uh, contractor and ask him, okay, how much of this, what we have only is a blueprint. So where is the construction document? Where is the civil document we don't have? So we get a budget. Budget means like 50% accuracy. So we cannot just say this is a number. So from five to eight million is the phase one. But I want to tell you, phase one is 70% cost of the whole project because all the infrastructure, the parking, the facilities will be done in phase one. So we don't have an accurate budget, uh, price. However, when we reach 70% of the document, uh, we can then send it and get an accurate price. Uh, some people ask about the recession, okay? So recession can actually work bad and good. Recession can work good if we, uh, with the recession, if a recession happened, we don't know whether it will happen or not, price usually, people will not build, so price will go down. So it's a good time actually to get a good cost for pricing. Uh, yes, the recession can have other bad consequences, but all the time we'll have something good and something bad. Uh, but as Abu Namina said, when we start building a church, it's God is the one who's building the church. So we, we are not worried about that part, uh, but definitely we're going to update you in each phase and when we get an accurate cost, we're going to tell you this is the cost of phase one, and this is uh, the time frame, and this is the cost of phase two, and this is why we're doing it in, in a modular basis. And there was a second question. The only outdoor like, activity for gathering, it's only the barbecue area, correct? The barbecue area and the fire pit area, that's the only... We have marshmallow area as well, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so actually in the front of the church now, so all of this here is also gathering space, right? So that you have that outdoor uh, playground for the children, all of that area around the water fountain, all of that is outdoor. Uh, what we or plan, what we're thinking of doing is doing some concrete benching that is part of the low walls. So you will see it around the areas. Once we develop this further, you will have some benching there around the fire pits and what, or sorry, the uh, water fountain. Yeah. But we have a lot of indoor. Are you talking about gathering after liturgy for food, yeah, Fadi? Are you talking about gathering after liturgy for food and stuff like this? Th th that's why we have the, the, the big multi-purpose rooms and, and other of the rooms and the big gathering area to do that. Even the area that uh, Michael mentioned between the two corridors, what you call them? Sorry? The, other, the area in between. Yeah. The, the atrium, yeah. So this, all, this is huge. This can, can accommodate a lot. So, so um, outside... We have also in the back area that, uh, if you can show them which one at the back. Yeah, so the, this atrium area is almost 4,000 square feet, right? So, so it's a lot of area for people coming out of the church, coming out of the multipurpose hall. You know, as a, as a, as a gathering space, I would say, I would, I would not recommend that people are obviously staying there for long periods of time. But then right as you go down the stairs, right in front of all of that, those two wings are essentially hugging a, a large outdoor space. And we're trying to maximize 
the utilization of the site. And this is why we're also using the areas in the back where right now you would not, exactly, for the barbecue and for the, um, correct, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we, we're still working through the materials and finishes. Obviously, you know, those can impact the budget. As an aesthetic, I mean, this is the overall aesthetic we're trying to achieve. But which type of stone we're going to use, which type of plaster we're going to use, etc., those are still being, these are still in the works. And so as we develop the drawings further, you guys will see better renderings. We're, we're still early. We're still, we're still getting the, the permission. Yeah, so. People got scared that it's going to be full white. And no, 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 it will not be white. What, what color do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, know. Uh, so the way we have the roofs right now, you know, there are multiple domes that are throughout the space, but also the, the church is much larger. So we need some space for mechanical, right? And so I want to be able to, yeah. So I want to be able to place my mechanical equipment and whatnot on the small flat areas that we have on, on the roof. So there is no roof activities here, not at this location. Yeah, it's it's great design. Really, it's a great design. But I, I think there's many other challenges that you have to consider. I know that uh, the next phases you are going to start pre uh, preparing the construction documents. But uh, it's essential that you provide drawings for phasing of the project, logistics, the site howl uh, during uh, and drought, how the trucks is coming in, coming out, all these issues. Project delivery method. I don't know if you consider this to control the budget like CM at risk, some, some stuff like this, no traditional uh, delivery methods, a design bit build. Yeah, so, so just to give you a quick background, actually my, our firm is a design build firm, right? But Great. because for the benefit of the church, we are doing a more conventional, which is a design bit build. But at the, as we progress through the drawings at 30% and at 50%, 70%, we're going to be running our metrics and kind of giving the church, hey, this is where we think you are budget-wise. Yeah, it's essential also to prepare some kind of like during the phasing, the during the construction, where the, the people are going to park their cars, attending the liturgy and all this stuff. This Thank is very us. important. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and all credit for the design, by the way, it goes to uh, Dr. Meher and, and Lydia helped them. It's perfect. Yeah, so. Yes. Okay, by any chance with this new design, can we have uh, like a solar panels to yes. save the power? Yeah, so, so actually part of the new code, we, we must provide solar to a certain percentage uh, of consumption. And so this, uh, I, I mentioned that, I believe, on the site plan portion that uh, solar will be provided. And right now, we're just kind of shading this area here. We're saying this could be potentially solar. But you know, we're still working out where it would make more sense. OK, one more question. And regarding the soccer field, can we have a turf to, to save water? Uh, and, fake turf? In turf, mean? yeah. Can, yes. Is it? Yeah. We, we can definitely Instead look at of that. Grass, yeah. yeah, we can definitely look at that. So all vegetation on the site has to be drought tolerant. We got to meet the California Green Building Code. In order for us to do that, we have to reduce our water consumption. So we have to look at drought tolerant type of vegetation. And if we can use turf, then yes, that's what we're definitely going to have to do. Yeah. There was one question here related to church has so many uh, uh, doors, uh, how we can have keys. Thank you for bringing this up because I'm not going to give key for like 100 doors. No, so everything will be upgraded and migrated to the new technology, keyless. Uh, so we'll use the technology either with codes or access codes. Uh, uh, to open and close the door. So everything will be automated, connected to the Wi-Fi and controlled and can be controlled uh, by any phone application or any and from the control room. Yeah. So we are taking care of, of that one. Yeah, Asher. That was one of the reasons why we chose the remodeling based on the same current building, 
versus building a new building outside. So this should is part of it, and I'll leave the rest to Michael to yeah. answer because there's a process that we have to follow. But we are using the same almost uh, blueprint of, or, or around the building, the existing one. We're going to get one more floor only. So hopefully this is much easier to get approved than having another building to block. And I'll leave you my that, that's, that's correct, yeah. So we're trying to renovate the building in quotation versus r removing and reconstructing a new building. So as you renovate, then the, the planning department is looking at it as an administrative review versus a complete public hearing review where they're calling everybody to come in and comment. And so that's really the approach that we're trying to take here. Uh, most likely not. Most likely not based on this approach. So we'll see what, what we run into, but I, I agree, and we have our civil engineer here, Hanny, which uh, will put all of those uh, WQMP and erosion control and uh, measures and everything else in place. There was a question why we don't have a multi-floor structure building for the parking. Uh, I think the main answer is cost. It costs a lot. So, so if we can do this without building a multi, and this will require approval, maybe a hearing, because this will block the view. So uh, hopefully we don't need that. We, we got preliminary approval based on what we submitted from the Pomona City, which is very good news. That means, it doesn't mean we got approved, but it means at least the, the outline that we proposed is, is making sense to them. They like the project. We got actually a very positive feedback. Uh, they called it an icon project. So uh, they gave us permission and they treated us as a, a zone area for, uh, um, not, not as, with commercial, yeah. yeah, in which this allow us to go from 35 or 32 feet to 45. So God is working with us, and we can see like this was a dream. We, we couldn't believe that this happened. So hopefully with your prayers and of course that Chief of St. Maurice and all the saints that uh, we can continue. So what, we are very optimistic about the approval and stuff from that perspective. We hopefully we don't get much of rejections on anything that's surprising us. Any other questions? Okay, well, we'll definitely take that into consideration, but it's, this is considered a two-story and an incidental uh, mezzanine, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about all around? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, so, so the nice thing is we do have the, some of the flat areas, flat roof areas, so we'll have roof access, ladders and whatnot, so we'll be able to maintain those. If it was no, you know, uh, yeah, so you understand. Any other... Uh, before we close for the day, yes, we need your prayers. Okay, ladies, we didn't talk, so now time for you. Yeah, you start first. That that is the consideration here. So if you if we go back to the site, uh, the area that I have marked here in yellow. That's already underneath it, it's all parking. And so the idea is if this is gonna be our solar area, it will be solar canopies. Yeah, so we'll just have to see how much solar we need to add, and then we'll figure out how many canopies we need to add, or maybe they can even go on the mountain, or, you know, so there are multiple options. The end, last one, hopefully. Con construction or, okay, so construction, we're thinking about 18 months from today. So hopefully 18 months from today, we have our permits ready to go, and then we can start breaking ground. My recommendation will be not to stop between phase one and phase two. I think we should really, God willing, we'll have the funds to be able to continue. But demobilizing and then remobilizing, a, con a contractor can cost us a significant amount of money. But if we can have them finish one phase, we move in and we start on the second phase, it really saves a lot of money and cost and time and everything else. So. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Michael, for, uh, okay. for all the effort. Bon uh, we all uh, 
Thank you, uh, Michael, for a great presentation. We, uh, as uh, Michael told us and Abuna told us, uh, we need your prayers, your patience, your support. Uh, we need in those 18 months to get as much as we can uh, for the money because that will determine whether we'll go to phase two right away after phase one or not. So prayers, support, patience, um, and uh, as much as we can, we try to get the, the, as much fund as we can. We know that God will send Saint Maurice from the time we have the church. There is no Maurice who wants to do it, he doesn't do it. Saint Maurice in the time that he wants to do something, هتحصل وبنشوف معجزات من ساعة ما ابتدينا الكنيسة. فوي نو ذات جاد ويل بيلد هيز هاوس، بس اتس ا بليسنج فور ايفري وان اوف اس تو بي بارت اوف ذا بروجيكت. وين وي جيف وي تيك جريتر بليسنج. سو جاد ويل بيلد هيز هاوس سان موريس ويل هيلب بس ات ويل بي ا جريت بريفليج فور ايفري وان اوف اس، ا جريت بليسنج فور ايفري وان اوف اس ان اور لايف تو بي بارت اوف ذيس جريت نيو بروجيكت جادز هاوس ذات ويل بيكوم ايفري وان از هوم. And um, I think we owe it to our next generation to uh, have something that we leave for them uh, to come and gather and be proud of and always be their home for life, right? Rabbana uh, Kamil, inshallah. Again, thank God, thank Sam Maurice, uh, thank Dr. Meher, Arshadik and Dr. Meher and Michael for a great presentation. Thank everyone who participated uh, in the committee member. I'm not going to mention names. But ربنا يعود كل حد تعرف في البرزنتيشن وصلونا ربنا يكمل على خير إن شاء الله وكلنا نفرح بالمشروع إن شاء الله تفضلوا نصلي بسم الله الحليم بسم الله أبو الإبن الرحيم قد سن واحد أمين إلهنا الصالح يا رب دع يدك قبل أيدينا وفكرك قبل فكرنا لأنك قدير ولا تخطئ أبدا بارك يا رب في العمل اللي إحنا ابتدينا يا رب على اسمك القدوس دبيتك يا رب وأنت ترشدنا كيف تريد وامتى تريد وازاي تعمله بصلوات امنا العذراء مريم القديس العظيم وريس بارك يا رب في كل من لهم تعب وعودهم وبركه صلوات قدس ابونا مينا وكل الحاضرين معنا اسمعنا نقول لك بكل شكر يا ابنا الذي في السماوات القدس اسمك Now the love of God, the Father, the greatest of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Go in peace and peace be with all of you. Elias, Urban, Baraka, Abuna, Mina, Mahal.